Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. Wherever you're watching from, we wanna say welcome home because we are a family at Word of Life and that includes you. If you would like to donate financially in support of all that God is doing here, you can do so by clicking on the Give link on our website or by texting the amount you would like to donate to 84321. When you give, you are helping us lead people to life in Jesus. Our heart as a ministry has always been to bless our community and we have been able to continue to do that even in this season because of all of you who give faithfully and we are so thankful for you. We are currently working with Greater Things Ministries in Greensburg by providing lunches and collecting donations to fill larger care boxes for homeless and other neighbors in need. We have been blown away by the incredible support we have received for our donation drive so far. We provided multiple van loads of donations these past two weeks and we are not stopping anytime soon. More info about how you can donate to be a part of this amazing program will be available after the service. We are excited to worship with you and to give God praise for how good he is. We pray that through today's service, you would experience his love like never before. Well, good morning, church. We're so excited that you would decide to join us this very morning in your home. So come on, wherever you're at, join together as a family and let's worship together.
I know that's where you'll be. I count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. I count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. Yes, he is. Come on. Just give God praise. Take a moment in your heart right now just to lift up praise and adoration, just honor to his great name. Whether you've been following him and worshiping him for years, or maybe this is the first time that you've ever experienced God in this kind of way. Oh man, he loves you so much. And he gave everything, his one and only son, his one and only son for you so that you would never have to be lost, so that you would never, ever have to be forsaken, but so that your value, who God created you to be, man, could be restored now and for all eternity. It's so good. He loves you so much. So it doesn't matter the fire. I love the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And it's a longer story, but where King Nebuchadnezzar threw them into this fire because they would not worship him and the things of this world. And I loved where he said, didn't we throw three men in there? Why are there four walking around? It's so amazing that Jesus was in the fire with them. And I love what's even, what's so awesome on top of that is the fact that when when they, when they pulled the men, when they said, open the doors, and the men came walking out. And the three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it says that not a hair was singed on their head. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. The only thing that they lost in that fire was their shackles, was the things binding them and, and binding their hands and feet together as they walked out free men. Oh, it's so good. And that's the same for each and every one of us today. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, it doesn't, man, God loves you so much. And he sent his one and only son, Jesus. And he has broken every chain and he has calmed every storm. And he has, he has protected you from every single fire that the enemy tries to throw your way. So just in this moment, it, everything around you may seem chaotic. And that's why the Bible tells us it's amazing that we don't walk by the things that we see. We walk by faith in his word and who he is. We walk by faith oh, in the resurrection of Jesus, which said everything, which just changed everything. Changed everything. Because it brought life in abundance to who we are today, to who you are today. Oh, and you can say, why? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in, in God. Well, I want to tell you something. He believes in you today. And he loves you right where you are. So just open your heart. The Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord. And, oh, and you'll be saved. And I believe that's so much more than just an eternal salvation, which is, if that's all that we ever got, man, that is so amazing. To live in eternity with Jesus, with our heavenly Father, and just in the power and his presence, just amazing. But to think that it's so much more than that, that he wants heaven to live on the inside of you, his power, his glory, his goodness, and to see your life right now set free set free because that's what Jesus paid for to set you free not just on the other side of this playground called earth but here and now let them calm the storm come on allow him to be with you in this fire and allow him to bust down those doors and allow you to walk free right now. So I declare life and freedom and hope and joy over you and your families. I declare just abundance. I declare health to be known. 
from the top of your heads to the bottom of your feet right now, young and old alike, it doesn't matter. I declare his goodness and his grace just to be manifest in everything that you do. So good, so good. So just again, just take another moment. Just close your eyes. And maybe this is the first time that you've had this opportunity or you've reached out in this kind of way. Just say, God, you're awesome. And I may not understand everything, but God, you, you haven't asked me to understand everything for your love and your goodness to be poured on me. All you've asked of me was just to surrender. Just to simply just get out of the way and give you who I am. <laughs> the good things, the bad things, the faults, the failures, the mistakes. God, you've asked for it all. And thank you, Father, that when we exchange, when we give you those things, you exchange your mercy. You exchange your grace because you exchange us our filthy rags with your perfect, righteous, and holy Son, Jesus. It's so good. Father, thank you for loving us today. And thank you for the honor of allowing us to love you. Thank you, Jesus. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Just stay in this attitude just for a minute. If you can, just kind of keep your eyes closed just for a minute. Unless you're driving a car, don't do that. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> but if you're there with your family, with loved ones, with friends, just stay in this moment. I'm telling you, God is there. God is there. God is with you right now. Healing is flooding in bodies. Chains are being broken and set free. The power of the Holy Spirit is being manifest in and through so many lives right now. And so good because He is so good. Allow Him to work in your life as we continue to worship. Just allow Him just to work in your life like never before. Amen.
God, you are so good. We love you so much. Thank you again for sending your one and only son, Jesus, for each and every one of us to restore our value, to restore our purpose. Thank you, Father. You are so good. And we honor your great name. And again, Father, I speak blessing and life and abundance into each and every home today. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, no matter where you're at right now, whatever you're doing, just take a moment and give God praise. Amen, because he is worthy, he is so good, and he loves you so much. Yeah, amen. Well, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We love you, and God loves you. Amen. We miss worshiping with you in person, but it has still been such a blessing to know we are worshiping together from our homes. We're excited to hear from Pastor Sheldon today, and we will be taking communion together. So grab some crackers and juice or whatever you have on hand so that you can be a part of this powerful time remembering and honoring what Jesus did for every one of us. Good morning, church. It's great to be with you this beautiful day in the Lord Jesus because this is the day that the Lord has made. It is my privilege and my honor to have communion with you today. I pray that the Lord will give us insight and understanding into all that he desires to do for us in this, these few short minutes that we have with communion. As I was praying about this and asking the Lord what he would have me do concerning communion, the name David immediately came into my heart and I thought, well, what does David have to do with communion. Well, David was a warrior, but even more importantly, David was a worshiper. 
And I believe that the reason that David could be the warrior that he was is because he was a worshiper of Almighty God. And that gave him the confidence and the assurance that he needed to stand against his enemies, knowing that God would give him the victory. For example, David was hiding out from Saul, and he had heard that the Philistines were at the town or the city of Keilah, and they were stealing grain from the people of Keilah. David inquired of the Lord, should I go and rescue the people of Keilah from the Philistines? And the Lord told him, go. Now, David had come together with a small army of men at this point. So when he presented this to his men, they were afraid because there weren't that many of them, and they felt that they have to, had to stand against the entire Philistine army. They were afraid. So what did David do? David went back and inquired of the Lord, or communed with God in a time of trouble and uncertainty. And then God gave him the assurance that he would deliver the Philistines over into his hands with a great, great victory. So David convinced his men to go to the city of Keilah, and God gave them a great victory over the Philistine army. But while he was at Keilah, someone had informed King Saul that he and his men were at the city. And because of this, Saul now gathers together the armies of Israel, and now he's going to come and attack the city of Keilah. What does David do? Because he's informed that Saul is now gathering his armies and is going to attack the city. What does David do? David communes with God. He communes with God in a time of uncertainty and in a time of trouble. And in so doing, he asked two questions of the Lord. First of all, will Saul come? And the Lord said, yes, he will come. David said, secondly, will the leaders of Keilah, will they betray me over to Saul? The Lord said, yes, they will betray you in order to save their city. So David now, in communing with God, he now gets a word that is going to literally save his life. Some of you need a word from the Lord this morning. Some of you need to hear from God. And there is nothing more important than communing with Almighty God. When we talk about communion, communing with Almighty God. Now you may ask and say, Pastor, what does this have to do with the body and the blood of Jesus Christ? Because that's what I thought communion was all about. And certainly we cannot forget about his broken body and his shed blood. But the question that we need to ask one another, or at least ourselves, we need to ask ourselves and saying, why did he shed his blood? Why did he give his body to be broken? And it is for this reason, so we can commune with God. So what we're talking about is communing with God in a time of uncertainty and trouble. And that is exactly where most of us are at this very day, in a time of uncertainty and trouble. The scripture tells us over in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, watch this. Let us come boldly. Why did Jesus shed his blood and allow his body to be broken? Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. There it is. Not only do we remember the broken body of Jesus Christ, not only do we remember the shed blood of Jesus Christ, but the question is, why? Why? In order that we could have fellowship with Almighty God in order that we could commune with our God in a time of uncertainty, and especially in a time of trouble. Jesus gathered together with his disciples. Join with me in communion, if you would. As he gathered together with his disciples, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this bread is my body, which is broken for you. Remember, he did this in order that he could bring many sons and daughters 
unto God the Father, and it was through the sacrifice that he made. This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat of this. And we now, in the name of Jesus, remembering his broken body and remembering why he gave his body to be broken in order that we could commune as children of God with God. We can commune with him. We take this bread now in Jesus' name. After the same manner, he took the cup and he said to his disciples, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Take and drink ye all of it for the remission of sin. So because our sin debt has been paid, now we can have communion with Almighty God. We can call upon his name in a time of trouble, in a time of difficulty. Why? Because the sin debt has been forgiven, has been paid for. That is absolutely awesome. And it's because of his shed blood that we have forgiveness of sins. So now in Jesus' name, let us partake of this cup. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. That we might obtain mercy and grace in a time of need. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I bless the people of God, the people that are communing with you right now. I bless them in the name of Jesus Christ, and I declare God's goodness, God's favor. I declare that all fear would be gone from their lives, that they would embrace the promises of God that are yea and amen, and know that God is no respecter of persons. He loves his children equally. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy God, that your blessing and your favor truly indeed can be received by all who are willing to commune with you. And this communion supper has reminded us that we are the sons, daughters, children of the living God. I bless them. I bless their families, their households. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor through Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Now, I believe that Pastor Sheldon has a stirring message for you that is actually going to challenge your life in Christ. Listen intently, listen with your heart, and receive what the Lord has for you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited that you're here with us today. God bless you. We pray God's favor and God's blessing into your life. We're here at Word of Life. We love to do our confession of faith. So wherever you are today, on your couch, in your, in your great easy chair, let's confess some things in the spirit today. Here we go. Join me. Jesus, be glorified in my life. Holy Spirit, I welcome your presence. My heart is open to receive the ever-living, never-changing word of God, the word that is changing my life, healing my body, and setting me free. My faith is growing, and I am living in the favor of God. I declare it, I believe it, and I receive it by faith. For I am blessed. Say it again. I am blessed. Now, one more time. I am blessed in Jesus' name. Amen, and God bless you. Well, join me in a word of prayer before the message today that your heart will be open, your, your attentiveness will, will be there for the word of God, and that you will be blessed through this word today. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives today. God, bless our time together. Open our ears, open our hearts to receive the ever-living, powerful word of God today. Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me begin today with a quote 
a quote from uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. And here's what Dwayne Johnson says. Here's what he says. Success isn't always about greatness. He says it's all about consistency. Listen to what he says. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come later. Dwayne Johnson, I agree with that. And uh, today I want to talk to you about the subject of consistency in our Christian walk. Consistency in our lives. Being able, the Bible calls it, to be faithful as it were. Faithful in our relationship with the Lord. There was, there's a scripture in uh, Second Chronicles that I want to read to you this morning concerning that. And uh, you'll find this in 2 Chronicles chapter 31 and chapter 32. But let me read a verse or two from chapter 31 of the uh, book of 2 Chronicles. And it's concerning a king by the name of Hezekiah. Now, Hezekiah at this time in his life was a very righteous man. He loved the Lord and he did what was right and, and true in the, in the eyes of the Lord. But listen as I read verse 20 of chapter 31, the book of 2 Chronicles. Thus... Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and true before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all of his heart. So he prospered. Now, it's interesting to me that Hezekiah, this king of Judah, did what was good, what was right, and what was true as he sought the Lord with all of his heart. And because of that, the, the, the final verse of chapter 31 says that God prospered him. God blessed him in light of all of those characteristics that Hezekiah had. Note verse 1 of chapter 32. After these deeds of faithfulness. I wonder sometimes what God calls faithful. What does God call faithful in our lives? It's obvious in the life of Hezekiah and in your life and my life that God calls faithfulness what, when, what, when we do what is good, when we do what is right, when we do what is true, and we seek the Lord with all of our heart. That's what God calls faithfulness. Now, let me read down because I, I highlight just a couple of verses here with you in chapter 32. Let me jump down to verse 6 of chapter 32 because, yes, Hezekiah was true. He was right. He was faithful. Does it mean that the enemy didn't come his way? Sennacherib came to destroy Judah. Now, Hezekiah was the king of Judah. He came to destroy Judah. And as he comes to destroy Judah, look at what Hezekiah, because of his Faithfulness, because he is faithful to the Lord. Look at how he addresses this onslaught of the enemy. Here's what he says in verse 6. And he appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square of the city gate. Then Hezekiah encouraged them by saying, be strong, be courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria or his mighty army. Now listen to the next phrase. For there is a power far greater on our side. Boy, that's a theme throughout Scripture, isn't it? There's a power that is far greater on our side. How could he say that? Because he was a faithful man. He must have a great army, but they, talking about Sennacherib, they are merely men. But we have the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles for us. And Hezekiah encouraged the people with those words. How could he say that? How could he be so bold as to say that God is on our side and we have no worries, no concerns with this enemy that's coming our, our way? He did that because he was a faithful man and God honors faithfulness. It was John Maxwell that said this, motivation will get you going. Discipline will keep you growing. That's the law, he says, of consistency. It doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how many opportunities you receive. If you want to grow, consistency is the key. When I was growing up in church, 
there was an elderly man that almost every time I saw him, he would, he would have a phrase that he said over and over again. I'll always remember it. He would always say to me, son, you need to keep on keeping on. <laughs> you need to keep on keeping on. What was he saying to me? He was saying, Sheldon, you just need to be faithful. You just need to be faithful. Keep on keeping on. It's steadfastness. It's dependability. It's, it's reliability. Let me ask you a question today. Let me ask you a couple of questions. What do you need most? What do, you, what do we need most out of parents in the home with their children? What, what's the most important thing that you desire from your paper boy or your, or, or, or your postman? What adds more weight to your witness for Christ than anything else? Well, if you answered consistency, you're right. Consistency, faithfulness. Chuck Swindoll, I love reading Chuck Swindoll. Here's what he says. It may be tomorrow. And he's talking about consistency. It may be there tomorrow, just like it was today. Flee from silly moods, sudden changes, and fads. That's consistency. Early in the day and late at night, consistency stands firm. When pain and hardship bite, consistency doesn't bleed, he says. When the majority are tired and irritable, consistency is stable and resilient. Yes, he says, it's solid. It's the stuff that most mothers are made of when their little ones get sick. It reveals itself in faithful employees who show up on time and commit themselves more to doing the job than watching the clock. Diligence is its brother. Dependability, its partner. Discipline, its parent. A couple of weeks ago, I talked to my son in Texas, and my question to him was, son, how are you doing through this quarantine? How's things going with the family, and how are you, how are you handling, this, handling this quarantine? And he said, Dad, I get up every morning, and I take a shower. I put on my clothes like I'm going to work, and I go down to the office, and I start work. He says, I have a schedule that I maintain every day. I just go about the regular activities of life. Here's what he was saying to me. He was saying, Dad, I need to be consistent. I need to be consistent. I don't get up and just lounge around and wear my pajamas all day. He said, I have, a, I have an objective. I have a plan. And that's what consistency is all about. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20 says this, a faithful man, listen to it, a faithful man, a consistent man will abound in blessing. Oh, that's a, that's a wonderful scripture. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5, another powerful scripture concerning the man Moses. Moses indeed, the Bible says, was faithful. Listen to it. He was faithful in all his house as a servant. Why? For a testimony to those things which would be spoken afterwards. One translation puts it this way. He was faithful so that his life would be an example to the God's truth. Amazing. Faithfulness. Faithfulness to the Lord. Abraham Lincoln said this, I do the best I can. I know the best, I do the best I can do, the very best that I can, and I mean to keep doing it till the end. <laughs> Is that your desire in life? Is it your heart to be consistent with your walk with the Lord, be faithful in your walk with the Lord, and to keep doing that until the very end? I want to encourage you today, be consistent. Get up in the morning, take a shower, get ready for work. <laughs> Go for a walk. Be consistent in your life with, with, the, with the things that are so important to you. Why is that important? Why is it important to be faithful? Why is it important to be consistent? Well, for several reasons. Reason number one, we identify with the very nature of God. Listen to this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 from the New King James Version. God is faithful. God is faithful by whom we are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The very nature of God is faithfulness. Do you know that even when we are unfaithful, he remains faithful to us? God is always faithful. And when we are faithful, when we are consistent in our walk with him, we identify with the very nature of God in 
in, in, in all of eternity. Hebrews chapter 13, we quote this verse all the time. Do we really know what it means? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and say it with me, forever. Forever. What does that mean? That Jesus Christ is faithful. That he is the same. He is consistent. He never changes. What is he faithful in? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question because it's my next four points. God is faithful. He is faithful to his promises. I want to tell you that this book is filled with the promises of God. And every promise in this book, God will be faithful to accomplish in our lives. He is faithful to his promise. How do I know that? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says that God is not sl slack concerning his promises. God is not slack concerning his promises towards us. He is faithful not only in his promises in this word, but he's faithful to forgive our sin. Listen to uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. He is faithful and he is just to forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is faithful to forgive us. Then, thirdly, he is faithful to minister to us even in the midst of our temptations. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us that God will not allow us to be tempted above that which we're able to bear, but he is faithful to us. He will be faithful to us. Faithful to minister to us in the midst of our temptation. And then I love Psalms 119. Verse 90 says this, that God's faithfulness endures to every generation. Every generation. God will always remain faithful. And when you are faithful, when you are faithful today, when you are committed today, when you are consistent today in your walk with Christ, you identify with God. We used to sing that little song in the church that goes, to be like Jesus to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like him. Well, if that's your heart today, if you genuinely want to be like Jesus, then you'll be faithful. Faithful in the things of God. Faithful to do what God's called you to do. So many people will say, well, you know, um, Sheldon, I, I want to read my Bible. And I, and I really try to get up and read my Bible, but the next day it's something else takes the place of that. I, I, I really want to witness. I really want to share my faith. And then we do it one time, and then something else takes the place of that. I'm saying today, be consistent. Be faithful in what God's called you to do. Firstly, we identify with the very nature of God. Here's secondly. Secondly, faithfulness qualifies us for ministry. The apostle Paul wrote to a young man by the name of Timothy. Now, Timothy was the pastor of a, of a church in Ephesus. It was a church that the apostle Paul started and Timothy was now the pastor of that church. And Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy, and here's what he says. He says, Timothy, I want you to remember something because he is trying to instruct Timothy on how to build a church. He says, Timothy, remember this. The things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, listen to what he says, commit those things, those things that I've taught you, commit those things to faithful men, men that are faithful who will be able to teach others also, commit that to faithful men. Don't commit it to unfaithful men because they will, not, they will lose it. They won't care. But find faithful men, find faithful women that you can commit these words that I've spoken to you and it'll build the church. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul talking about himself. Here's what he says. Paul was thanking God. He says, for putting me into the ministry. Thank you for putting me into the ministry, Lord, because of my faithfulness. You see, God saw in Paul faithfulness. And he said, you know, I can trust that man. I can count on that man. I can put confidence in that man. Why? Because he's faithful. Because he's committed. Because he's consistent with his walk in the Lord. I found this verse in Proverbs chapter 25. Kind of a funny verse. But um, I want to read it to you. Proverbs 25. You might want to make a note of that. Proverbs 25, verses 19 and 20. Here's what it says. Proverbs 25, 19 and 20. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble. You know what it's like? The writer of Proverbs says this. It's like a bad tooth. <laughs> it's like a foot out of joint. <laughs> you don't walk very well with your foot out of joint. 
You don't feel very good with a bad tooth. It's always gnawing. It's always there. He says, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like, is like one who takes away a garment in, a, in, in cold weather. <laughs> he says, thirdly, lastly, he says, it's like vinegar with soda. Remember that little experiment you did in high school or in, or in, or in grade school possibly where you took a little soda and you put a little vinegar on it and, and, and it erupted in a volcano? Remember those? That's what the writer of Proverbs says, putting confidence in, a, in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is like, it's, it's, like it's, it's going to erupt. It's going to erupt. It's not good. Do what's right. Do what's true. Do what's good. Seek the Lord with all your heart, the Bible says, and you'll be faithful. If you're always up and down and and there's no consistency in your life. And you, you want to do this, but you find other things to do instead of that. It, 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 it'll damage your influence with others. And that's what the Apostle Paul's writing about. That's what Proverbs is trying to tell us. It'll, inf- it, it'll damage your influence on others. So faithfulness qualifies us for ministry to other people. People see our faithfulness. And they see our consistency. May I also say they see our inconsistencies also. Thirdly, why do we need faithfulness in our lives? Because faithfulness is the reward that we gain in eternity. Oh, I want you to hear this today. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 21, here's what it says. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. What a tremendous verse. You know, Rick Mears, who was uh, uh, a driver, he was a a car driver in the Indianapolis 500. He won four times. He won that, that race four times. Here's what Rick Mears says. He says, to finish first, to finish first, you first need to finish (laughs) <laughs> what do you mean by that? And let, let, me, let me add to that. You need to not only finish, but you need to finish well. He was saying what the gospel writer writes. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Good in that text, you know what it means? It means excellence. It means uprightness. It means to honor, to be useful. To be good means to be faithful. To be faithful. I think of all the phrases that could have been used when we, uh, we as believers are welcomed into heaven. God chose that phrase. He chose those words to welcome us into the very portals of eternity. The words, well done. Well done. Good. And what? Faithful servant of the Lord faithful servant of the Lord. So we talk about faithfulness. We talk about goodness. We talk about God's character in our lives. We talk about the reward that we'll receive. All of these things, so important if we are going to understand what it means to be faithful, what it means to be consistent. What what am I saying? I'm, I'm saying get up every morning and read your Bible. Get up every morning and, 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 and look at, at, the, at the devotional. Get, get up and, and, and get ready for the day. Plan your schedule. Make sure that you include certain things in, in your life. Be consistent in your walk with Christ. Be consistent in your walk with your family. Be faithful. Be faithful. Well, how do you cultivate this attitude of faithfulness, this attitude of consistency? How do we do that? How, how do we... How do we change our lives? You may say, well, you know, Sheldon, I'm, I'm not very consistent. I'm not very consistent with my, with my life. I, 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 I need to be more consistent. I need to be more faithful. Well, how do you cultivate that? Well, well let, me, let, me, let me just give you three things today that will help you to cultivate faithfulness in your life. And then when I finish these three things, I want to pray for you. Uh, here, here's point number one. If you want to cultivate faithfulness in your life, focus on character. Focus on character. And that is living a life of commitment 
and not convenience. Can I say that again to you? I want you to get that. Living a life of commitment and not convenience. Convenience, by definition, is a state of being able to proceed with something with little effort, no difficulty. That's convenient. So many people live their lives in a convenient way. Well, if it feels good, fine. If it doesn't feel good, I won't do it. Convenience is emotionally based. Commitment is character based. Convenience says, well, if, if it's easier, I'll do it that way. Commitment says, I'll do it because it's right. It's the right way to do it. Convenience says, I'll feel good, then I'll do it. Commitment says, I'll do it, then I'll feel good. Convenience is a selfish mindset. It's all about me. Commitment is all about servant mindset. It's all about others and my commitment to them. Convenience looks for all the excuses that we can find that we're not going to do something. Commitment looks for solutions. I will be faithful. Convenience quits during really tough times. Commitment endures through those tough times. Convenience whines and cries when things don't go their way. Commitment says I'll win because I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Someone defined character like this. The ability to carry out a good solution long after the mood in which it was made is past. That's a great definition for character, isn't it? So firstly, focus on commitment. Focus on character. Don't live your life by convenience. Secondly, focus on the bigger picture. You know what the bigger picture is? The bigger picture is this, that God has a plan for your life. To fulfill that plan is success. To find that plan is success. Find what God has planned and destined for you. The purpose for your life. Don't get bogged down with all the minor issues that, that really don't matter at all. They really don't matter. Listen, we'll get through this quarantine We'll get on the other side of it. Don't get bogged down with all of these things. You know, my, my, my wife and I, we've almost quit, stopped watching the news. And that includes NBC and ABC and CBS and Fox and all the others. The best news that you can get is right here in the word of God. Don't focus on those things. Don't, don't get bogged down with those minor issues of life. Look at life with eternity in view. Oh, so important. Look at life with eternity in view. You know, the best things in life are not things. <laughs> the best things in life are the eternal things of God. Faithfulness. Endurance. Getting through. Mother Teresa said this. She said, God, is not call God, has, God has called us, excuse me. God has called us to faithfulness. God has not called us to success. But let me say this to you. If you're faithful, God will bring su success into your life. If you're committed, God will bring success into your life. If you're consistent, God will bring success into your life. Thirdly and lastly, we all have disappointments in life. You can either focus on all of the negative things and all of the things that, that are difficult in your life, or you can focus on the positive. You can focus on the victories Here's what I'm saying today. If you, want, if you want to cultivate faithfulness in your life, focus on the victories in life. Focus on the good things of life. We, we all have failures. Every one of us have had failures. But oh man, God brought us through those failures. Think about the times that God brought you through. Did you deserve it? Probably not. But God brought you through. God sustained you. God did miracles and, and wonderful things in your life. Focus on those things. Situations that may have seemed impossible, but, but suddenly God broke through. Focus on those positive things in life. Faithfulness. Be faithful. Be consistent. Be committed in every area of your life. Especially during this time. Let me close with this. 
especially during this time of, of instability, as it were, when we look at our nation and our world and we wonder what's, what's happening, it's so important that you and, and I stay faithful, faithful to the Lord, faithful in your giving, faithful to your commitment to your family, faithful to the things of God, faithful in reading your word, faithful, consistent, and committed. What does God call that? He calls that good. He calls it right. He calls it true. He calls it seeking God with all of your heart. And when that's in place, God will bless that. Allow me to pray for you today. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for all of those that are listening today. And I pray your blessing into their lives. I pray, Father, that they have heard the word of God today. That they will be consistent that they will be faithful in their relationship with you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for all that you have done and all that you're doing. And we focus today on the promises of God. We focus today on the word of God. We will not be detracted from this word because your promises are true. They are faithful and they always are accomplished. We thank you for that. We like to close our time together just praying for you and Today, let me ask you, if you've never made a commitment of your life to Christ, would you consider that today? Would you consider making a, a commitment of your life to Jesus Christ? Would you just bow your heads right now where you are, right there in your living room? Just bow your head right now. You don't have to close your eyes. Just, just bow your head and, and pray this with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior today in Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you to do something else. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone that may be in your house, in your home, maybe a family member. And maybe if there's no one there, find somebody, call somebody on the phone. Just say, you know, I prayed a prayer today and I've received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If you did that, let us know. You can... You can a call or email the church here. We'll send you out a packet. We'll help you get started on your relationship with the Lord. God bless you. And thanks again for being with us today. We pray God's blessing on you and your family today in Jesus' name. Thank you again for joining us. We pray you were blessed and encouraged by today's service. And we invite you to join us again next week. If you would like to know more about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus, please reach out to us. Email us at info at wordoflife.church or call the number on your screen. We have some amazing resources that we would love to share with you that will encourage you and teach you more about God's goodness and his incredible plans for your life. For those of you who are able to give at this time and are looking for an opportunity to help, we are still accepting donations in support of our local ministry, Greater Things, who provides food and resources to those who are homeless and other neighbors in need. They are especially in need of non-perishable foods and toiletry donations to build larger care boxes. We have a graphic here that explains what is needed and you can drop your donations off at our main office Monday to Wednesday between 9 and 11 a.m. or 1 to 4 p.m. And you don't even have to come in to donate. Just leave your items at our main office doors and ring the buzzer for our front desk so we know we can come get them. If you would like more info, call our office or visit us online to find all of these details again. We will be collecting donations each week until further notice, and we are so honored and excited to be able to help greater things reach those in need. Follow along with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube if you would like to know more about what God is doing in and through Word of Life Church. If God is using our church to change your life and you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so by clicking on the Give link on our website, wordoflife.church, or you can text the amount you would like to donate to 84321. Thank you for helping us lead people to life in Jesus. We love you, God loves you, and we are so thankful you chose to spend time with us today.